<clears throat> I want to thank you, the great Jehovah, for your goodness. Thank you for the good morning. Thank you for the bright day. Thank you for the showers of blessing, protection. Thank you, Lord, for everything and thy breath of life this day. Lead us, Lord, into the day, now and forevermore. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and believe. Amen. Children of God, my desire to all, my desire to all my friends, my desire to all my neighbors, my desire to all my brethren, my desire to all my fellow Christian brethren, my desire to my community. This is my desire, children of God, that we may live in one accord, that we may foster to work together, that we may pull one another, those who are lame, those who are weak, to find strength amongst ourselves. <clears throat> Those who are not able to see who are blind, to find direction with the eyes of the fellow members in the brotherhood. Those who have no arms will have a hand to our fellow brethren. Everybody who will be having a miss in the life will find that perfection from the other. Child of God, this is my desire. The book of First Timothy, Paul is talking to his son, Timothy. He tells Timothy in First Timothy chapter 2, that therefore I want the men, wherever they are, that every time they go to pray, they raise their hands in holiness. The holy hand is raised without anger without any disrepute. I also want women to dress modestly. This was the desire of Apostle Paul to his people. Dressing modestly <clears throat> and decently in propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyle or gold or pearls or expensive clothes while among us the fellow women. This, there is no one under the sun who would wish to be, to dress badly. There is no one under the sun who would wish to be singled out as one who does not know how to live modestly. Everybody loves good things. Everybody wants to be beautiful. Every lady, every woman, however young or old, would wish to be adored, would wish to be identified as beautiful. Every man, young man, to old age, would always want to be seen and adored as handsome. No one would wish to be left out. But there is this desire of my heart, which is desire to Paul, that whenever we come before God, we already know we were made in the form and likeness of God. Our God was never ugly. Our God is never ugly. He is beautiful. He is handsome for men. And therefore, whenever we come to him, we need to come with the beauty that he created us in. <clears throat> The things of this world has made us to forget about the sanctity of the life, the beauty of God, the handsomeness of God. The glory of God can never be measured by any beauty of this world. This is what the Bible, the scripture, the word of God is urging us to live within. My desire to my friends today, children of God, I remember in Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians says that, therefore, I therefore a prisoner of the Lord. Paul is yearning and is praying. He would rather be a prisoner of God than to be a prisoner of this world, the Lord of this world. I would rather be a prisoner of Christ, the Savior, than to be the prisoner of the devil the, 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 who captured man. 
I would rather be a prisoner of the beauty of heaven than to be the prisoner of the short-lived things, ornament, bangles, jewelry of this world that can get lost, that is never long-lasting. The beauty of the glories of God, the beauty of men and women who come before God is from inside. And I want to tell you, child of God, there's none who had always gone before God and came out and seen by the world as an ugly person. Tell me, from the televangelists, preachers, bishops who come before worldwide presenting the word of God are always beautiful in their presentation, always handsome, nicely dressed, modestly to present the glory of God. Paul says, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, may beg you, I beg you to lead the life worthy of the calling, worthy of the calling which you have been called. This is the message Paul is telling us. This is my desire to you, brother and sister, with all lowliness and meekness, with patience, forbearing one another in love. If at all, it was not the love of agape that God showed to his own mankind. Child of God, we would have not been where we are today. 124 uh, chapter of Psalms says that if it were not of you, God, our destroyer, our destructor, the devil would have cleared and finished us a long time ago. Child of God, we need to be eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the body of peace. Verses 3 of the fourth chapter of Ephesians says so. Our eager, our strength, we need to pray always that to maintain the unity of peace, the unity of patience, the unity of love. There is one body and one spirit, just as we are called on the one hope that belongs to you and me. Child of God, there is one God, there is one faith, there is one baptism. I love this. Yesterday we talked about baptismal, that every time any servant of God come before God and accept, repent, and give out everything in this life. The person is baptized by immersion into the water of baptism. And by that time on earth, the water of baptism becomes the witness. The blood of Christ that was shed on the cross becomes a witness. And the word of God who was made man becomes the witness. At that juncture, when the servant of God raises the hand as the body is immersed into the water, in the heavenly realm, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, also are witnesses as the man is immersed in the water of baptism. This is the same peace and desire that there is one God, there is one faith, there is one baptism. One God and Father of us all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. Child of God, this is my grace, they, and this is my desire, that the grace of God may cover us, may umbrella us, that everything we go out to do today, whatever we need in life today, may be a presentation as the fragrance, as the sacrifice we give before the Lord, not as a lamentation, but a thanksgiving prayer. God says, but grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. The gift that the Lord has given you, the gift that the Lord has given me, might be different in their line of operation, in the way we live. But I want to tell you that the grace of the one who gave that gift to us is the standard measure, which is Christ, as he gives out the gift to his chosen ones. Therefore, it is saying, 
that when he ascended on a high, he led the host of captives. When he rose from the dead and gave gifts to men. Verses 8 of fourth chapter of Ephesians. He ascended. What does it mean? Children of God. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you, Lord, for this morning. I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your presence. I thank you, Lord, for thy spirit. I thank you for your presence in our life. Your spirit flows. Gospel according to John says, from whichever he comes, nobody knows, and forever he goes, nobody knows. But the impact, whatever the spirit does, it what is felt like the wind. Father, may thy presence in our life be felt by the brethren around and about us. That is our desire is to live in peace, with love, with tranquility, with in harmony. That may everybody that we shall get brushed, touched, greeting upon along the highways of our life today. May we be a blessing to our brethren. May we be a peace to our brethren. May we be a coolant to the soul that is fatigued with the heat of problems. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and believe. Amen. Child of God, may the good Lord of heaven continue to lead you. May he continue to give you direction as he gave the direction to his servant Elijah when he ran from Haham, king who wanted to kill him. He was given the power and the speed that surpasses a human speed. May he lead you as he led the servant David, son of Jesse, when he ran into the wilderness, when his blood was being bathed by King Saul. It is only the Lord who came to cover him and gave him the tranquility and the power to move. Remember in uh, Psalms chapter 23, he came back to say, Oh, I have seen the glory and the Lord is my shepherd. He saw God shepherding him into the darkness, the dark and the, the, the dark part of the world in his life. Child of God, if it were not the glory of God covering the Nebuchadnezzar for seven years into the wilderness, he lived like a beast. After seven years, the Lord God brought him back unto the throne and he came to testify and confess there is no God like God of Daniel. There is no God to be worshipped in my kingdom and nobody will worship any other God other than the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Child of God, may this God of ours who have pulled us from the pool, from the mud of sad moment, from the mud of sleeping angry, from the mud of sleeping out into the cold, Father, mother, son, daughter, brother, sister, may we come to recollect where we have come from. There's a moment your tears roll down your cheeks. Today, you might not be feeling okay, but you are better off than yesterday. May that be the anchor, the turning around, the point at which you come to say, this is my desire to thank you, God. Let us thank you for the little he has given us today and tomorrow is going to give us more of what we need today. Our God is so loving. Our God is so caring. Our God is with us. He walks with us. He says, I will always be ahead of you. I will go ahead of you as he told Moses. I will go. I am with you. I am ahead. I've already gone ahead. Child of God, whatever the choice you are headed today, he is ahead of you. He is with you. May the good Lord of heaven continue to show and shower us with his blessing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Be blessed, child of God. He is with you. He is with me. He is with all of us. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and believe. Amen and amen and amen.